Hey there, imagine a place on Earth that's just like Venus. It's Chile's Atacama Desert. I assume you wouldn't want to spend your holidays there. Similar to other deserts, this one isn't exactly the friendliest place. It's a long stretch of land close to the Andes Mountains. This makes it one of the driest spots on the planet. In fact, it's so dry that only a few places in Antarctica have stayed without rain for longer. This tough environment has some benefits to offer. Because it's located high up and doesn't have many clouds or a lot of light pollution, it's become the perfect home for advanced telescopes. These telescopes help us explore the cosmos. A new study from June 2023 revealed that this desert is even weirder and more out of this world than we had thought. It makes sense that a desert as dry as this one gets a lot of sun. On average, it has about 308 watts of sunlight per 10 square feet. That's almost twice as much as places like Europe or the eastern United States get. Raul Cordero is a scientist. He and his team checked out the sunlight in the spot housing the biggest telescope project ever, the Atacama Large Millimeter Array. And this is the sunniest place on Earth. This is what you'd experience if you were about 79% of the way from the sun to Earth. Of course, if you were actually on Venus, you would have way bigger things to worry about than just a lot of sunlight. Now let's figure out why this place is almost as sunny as Venus. It's because of clouds. Usually, clouds block sunlight and keep us cool, but sometimes they can act like a magnifying glass in special situations, concentrating the sun's rays. This is called forward scattering. This happens when certain types of clouds show up during the South American monsoon in the middle of the summer. During the summer in the Southern Hemisphere, we're actually a bit closer to the sun, and there's less ozone in that part of the world. This combo might explain why other high places on Earth, like the Himalayas, don't get as much intense sunlight as this desert. Let's talk more about Venus. What would it be like to stand on the surface of this planet? The more you learn about this sweltering world, the less you want to picture yourself there. It's not a friendly place at all, with crazy heat and super heavy air that could crush you. But pretend for a moment that you're on Venus. The air there is thick and heavy, 93 times denser than what we have on Earth. The air presses you down. Think of having a small car resting on your thumbnail. That's how it would feel. Or think about diving really deep into the ocean. You'd feel a lot of pressure pushing on your body. But on Venus, it's like having all the pressure of the atmosphere squishing and almost flattening you. What is the weather like on Venus? Ouch! Heat. Even though Mercury is closer to the sun, Venus wins the prize for the hottest planet's surface. That thick air on Venus is mostly carbon dioxide, which acts like a blanket. When the sun shines on Venus, the heat gets trapped by this blanket of air, and the planet heats a lot. Temperatures on Venus can hit 860 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, how do we explore Venus without getting roasted or squished? Well, going there in person is a no-go. Robots can handle it, yet even robots have struggled on Venus. Only a handful have made it to the surface. And they only managed to survive for a few hours before getting wrecked by the harsh conditions. The good news is we're figuring out ways to study Venus without putting anyone at risk. Future missions will check Venus out from above. Spacecraft up there will be able to see through the atmosphere without any trouble. NASA's got the Veritas mission. Its aim is to make detailed maps of Venus from orbit, giving us a new view of the place. So we've examined the driest desert on our planet, the Atacama Desert. No wonder this area is the place that serves as testing grounds for space missions. But despite how arid this region is, there is life there. This is a realm of flamingos and lagoons. The place has colossal salt flats that extend for 4,633 square miles at a depth of 82 feet. It's a place of erupting geysers, naturally heated springs, towering volcanoes, herds of llamas, and deserts so parched that certain pockets have remained untouched by rain for over half a millennium. All this unfolds two to three miles above the sea level. 
What else survives in the Atacama Desert? It's quite hard to fathom that plants could thrive in such inhospitable conditions. Yet, they manage to survive here. Take, for instance, Tillandsia landbecki. These plants defy the odds in the desert by extracting moisture from the fog that rolls in from the nearby coast. This fog water can also serve as a sustainable water source for humans. These plants lack traditional roots. Instead, they use their older, deceased parts to anchor themselves in the sand, forming little dune-like structures. They draw moisture out of the mist through their slender leaves and shoots, which swell upon contact with water. Nocturnal dew also provides water, particularly during the summer when fog is scarce. Together, plant communities existing there are known as Lomas vegetation. The presence of this vegetation in the Atacama Desert is limited to a narrow coastal area where fog regularly occurs. Factors such as the distance from the Pacific, prevailing wind direction, and topography restrict the distribution of fog ecosystems. Satellite data analysis reveals that plants grow at altitudes ranging from 2,625 feet to 4,100 feet above sea level and up to 28 miles inland. They are mainly found on sandy plains along fog corridors or on slopes. They're about as tall as one and a half feet, and they usually form a line. This clever lineup helps them catch all the moisture and yummy nutrients they need. The arrangement of these clusters depends on how much foggy water they can find. These tough desert plants are like water wizards of the plant world. They're so good at surviving in the desert that they give us ideas about getting water from fog. Water is precious in places like Iquique and small villages near the desert. Plus, with all the digging for stuff like copper and lithium, which makes batteries work, they need even more water. Usually, people get drinking water from under the ground, but these little plants have something to teach us. Using this trick, we're making a map showing where these plants like to party most. This map could help us find perfect spots for catching fog with special nets. Here's another idea that will make you feel like you're on the surface of another planet. Pelican Point is in Namibia. You might not expect it, but Pelican Point is actually a great place to surf. Every year, it only gets around 0.30 inches of rain, but that doesn't stop surfers from riding the waves. The weather is kind of unique here. It's hardly ever too hot or too cold. This place has an unusual type of dry climate, thanks to the cold ocean currents near the bay. Skeleton Bay, alternatively named Donkey Bay, is an iconic surfing location. The surf wave crashes onto the sands of Pelican Point, situated about five miles northwest of Walvis Bay, a compact harbor town famous for its sand dunes and secure anchorage. Would you surf there? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.